Hello everyone, in this video I'm going That's to be curious. playing City TD version 2.6a. Sounds interesting. At the top right it says 2.6, or 2.7, but I'm not really sure why that I'm is trying the to case. Think here. Because on the loading screen and map name, it says it's 2.68. I'll check it out. So to start here, I'm going to select easy difficulty, which will reduce the health of incoming monsters by 30%. It's a pretty challenging game, and I haven't been able to figure out how to beat it on a higher difficulty. But when playing on easy, I recommend strongly picking Archmage, Archmage hero or Archmage. I want to say it. And with this hero, what you want to do is at the start of the game, go and destroy the barrels in the corners. There's a chance for you to drop items. And as you see there, we just found five items, which should sell for somewhere in the ballpark of like 150 gold. Yep, 152. What's the plan? And now we have two options. We can either invest that into our towers, or we can invest that into our wisp farm. This is going to go into the wisp farm. Since we have a huge surplus of gold, um, even leaving 50 spare after doing that is going to make this pretty easy. Next thing we'll do is upgrade the archer. This isn't too necessary, you don't really need an archer upgrade until like level 4, but uh, for now we're going to be fine. Either way. So with the wisp we'll now get like 1 wood per 5-ish seconds I would say, maybe 10. And yeah. The wood requirements aren't too high. The structures that we'll be getting in the immediate future will probably cost like 10 ish wood. And there are alternative methods to gaining wood. Eventually, at level 7, we'll be able to kill the creatures that spawn in this zone, which will give us like 10 ish wood per kill. Yeah, the wisp is pretty optional, but if you do get it, it can make things a little bit simpler. So, with the archer, we're going to be upgraded it to the sharpshooter, and once we can, we're going to upgrade it to the royal archer. One thing to keep in mind about attack rate is that it's actually the cooldown between attacks. So an attack rate of 1.2 means it attacks, waits 1.2 seconds, and then attacks again. So the lower that is, the better. The fastest tower that I know of in this game is the Solvent, which has an attack rate of 0.2, or 5 attacks per second. However, this is an extremely expensive tower, and I haven't really found any use for it. It costs 250 wood, and at our current rate of wood gathering, that would take ages to get. Eventually, we will have more than 250, but by then the DPS of the tower is pretty terrible, because the tower only has a damage of, I think, 60. So it's 300 DPS, but by the time you can afford it, it is just really pathetic. Now, the tower would scale really well with damage items, but there's almost no damage items that you get access to. The only damage item that I can think I of off the top of my head is like a thousand gold for 500 damage, which is pretty good, but the only way you can get access to it is if you build the item shop within like before level 5. Because the items in the shop will have really long cooldowns, most of them take like 10 to 20 levels or more to complete, you have to prepare really far in advance. That's curious. Also, if you guys like my videos, don't forget to like it if you enjoy my content, and if you want to play games with me, I do live streams every Saturday, so make sure you're subscribed and have notifications set to all to be notified for exactly when those begin. Boss got pretty far there, but I wasn't very concerned. Worst case, we could have fireballed the boss for 150 damage. But yeah, if you wanted to be an extra safe, you could have had the Royal Archer done I'll beforehand. It would have worked out as well. What's the plan? I'll take Job care of it. Done. I'll check. So to continue our maze, Job we're just going to start Job up a done. new diagonal. Sounds good. Job's done. Job's done. Job's the reason done. I'm going Job's for diagonals is just I think it'll help Job's us done. to maximize the maze time a little bit. Sounds interesting. By keeping our strongest towers attacking longer. That's curious. And because guard dogs are the cheapest, that is what we use for the mazing unit. If they had something cheaper that did no damage at all, that would probably be better. But unfortunately, that doesn't exist. Boss dropped a claws of attack, so we'll Sounds go ahead and put that on a royal archer. It doesn't sell for much, and it also gives almost no damage. The item really doesn't make too big of a difference either way. What's the plan? 
be getting the next archer upgrade pretty much as soon as possible. And what makes this archer upgrade in particular quite good is that his access to poison arrows, which will slow down the incoming enemy's movement speed by 40%. Which, as we've observed in other games, chaining or comboing multiple movements slows together is incredibly powerful. So we'll do a 40% movement slow from poison, and then an additional however much frost gives, and an additional percentage on top of that from a slow aura tower, which will eventually make the units almost completely stationary. So, at level 7 completed, which meant our first killable or huntable unit in the top left spawned, and I didn't actually pay attention, but I think it was like 9 to 15 souls. What is it now? Okay, so next up from the Assassinator, we'll, we can either upgrade to the Ice Archer or the Flame Archer. I'll probably be going for the Flame Archer. The Ice Archer will want to get eventually, but the DPS isn't that high, but we'll be holding off for a little while. And on level 10, I'm going to switch from piercing armor units to normal armor, which means you want to upgrade three bloodhounds to make sure you can take out the enemy waves successfully. And yeah, if you have three bloodhounds, it can pretty much take out all the units in the wave in one hit. And from here, you can just start stockpiling resources for the Flame Archer. For a couple of prerequisites, though, you need to make a Black Launcher and then upgrade your Bloodhound to a Lycan Rider, which in total will be 200 gold extra. And then the Flame Archer itself costs 480 gold, so you can't actually avoid this for a little while. You require my assistance? So just what up at the top now? left, use your water elemental ability whenever possible, well, and just take out all the units because we want to get as many it. resources from here as we can. You require my assistance? We shouldn't really have any difficulty down here until about wave 15, which will be when the next boss spawns. Get on with it. You require my assistance? That's curious. Just thinking about what I want to do for the boss. One assassinator is probably just about enough DPS to take care of it already. But I can we could help. go to two assassinators just because of the delay. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to upgrade this archer into a second assassin. Upgrade complete. Then next up, I will replace one of the wolves with a flak launcher. Sounds interesting. Replace this one. I'm kind of thinking. I'll take care of Black launcher range is pretty solid. I think at level one it's like 500, and then eventually it'll get to 900. That's curious. The tooltips for the flak launcher are pretty inaccurate on the later levels. It'll say it goes up to 2,000 range, but in reality it's only. 850 or 900, which is still really good. If it was 2,000, that would be most of the zone here, I can help. which would be really nice. That's curious. Also, one thing worth mentioning, when well, you select your hero, it's very important that you don't accidentally cancel it. If you cancel your hero right after you click it attack. to start creating the hero, you'll permanently lose access to all heroes for the game. What is it now? Yeah, just make sure you don't make that error. I can hardly wait. The second ability we'll be getting with our main what is, it now? is Hex. Hex is going to be really useful for fighting bosses in the top left. Get on with it. I'm trying to think here. Around level 20, we want to create a few item shops. But you don't want to make those too soon because you need to have enough money to actually take out the incoming wave. Going to upgrade a Bloodhound to a Lycan Rider. This is a very cost ineffective upgrade. For 130, you only get an extra 20 DPS. Whereas I think a Guard Dog itself was only like 50 gold total. So yeah, just terrible value. 
but that will give us access to the Flame Archer, so it's going to be Go ahead and use our Bloodlust ability. That's a cooldown of like two to three minutes, so you really want to save this for waves where you struggle a lot. And he probably would have been fine either way. I think that Sounds got us like four extra hits. I'll check it out. So, in a moment here, we'll be getting the Flame Archer. With the end of round bonus. Nice, just enough. This is a pretty long construction time on Flame Archer, so there might be one helicopter that gets through before the Flame Archer finishes. That's curious. Nice. We actually finished it like two seconds before we would have missed the unit. Well, for glory. Alternatively, I could have created a Royal Gunman, which would help us with this wave as well. But the next batch of air waves isn't till like level 36. What's the plan? Yeah, 36. But so this is not too helpful. Actually, there is also one air wave at level 26. Sounds good. And yeah, now that we have the flame archer, it's going to take care of this wave pretty easily. I can help. You require my assistance. You require my assistance. All right. It's a little early, but I think now is a pretty good time to create the item shops. We're going to be making six, so that's going to drain a total of 150 gold. So just make sure you have a fair amount ready. So you know what? I'm going to be a little more aggressive on this and make nine. And the reason for that is the item we're waiting for is the Ruined Gauntlets, which take 20 levels before they are available to purchase. Actually, I think it's 15. And then after that, the cooldown decreases a bit, but it's still pretty normal. What's the plan? That's curious. And yeah, with nine of these, we'll still be able to purchase every single green gauntlet that's available later on. I can help. Okay, now's a good time to start upgrading our rock launcher. Upgrade complete. You want to get a level, the next level above bomb launcher, which is the bomb tower. By the time you reach wave 25, if you do that, then you have a pretty good likelihood of leaking zero units. But if you don't have a bomb tower in time, it's pretty hard to take care of that wave successfully. That's curious. Get on with it. Probably should try to keep the mage next to the mana fountain. To battle. Can I help you? Well, fine. One thing I'm not sure about, I haven't tested this game in multiplayer, so I'm not sure if when a golem gets killed, if every player in the game gets souls, or if it's just the person who kills the unit. I would hope every player gets souls, otherwise that would make it pretty difficult for more than one player to succeed. Well, Yeah, so wave 21 is the beginning of the fortified waves. And then that'll continue until level 26, or level 25. So yeah, just try to make sure you have your bomb tower set up by about level 22 or 3. And soonish here, we're going to get an ice archer as well, but I'd rather get the bomb tower first. Because the gold bonuses and the creep bounty goes up every single wave, you will pretty quickly be able to start affording more expensive towers as you go on. Sounds interesting. Might add one more level of guard dogs, but I shouldn't eat it just yet. Yeah, so here's the bomb tower. It has 800 range and 660 to 760 damage with an attack rate of, I think, 1.8. means we're shooting out one boulder per two seconds, roughly. You okay, the first assistance? boss at the top left is spawn. The first you? boss is Arthas. What it's very is it important now? that you re- Oops, I just took the wrong ability. Um, I had meant to take an extra level of hex there, but we should be fine either way. Well? Anyway, I was going to say it's very important that you get access to the Ice Shard that'll cost you 60 gold, but in return, it'll give you an Ice Revenant, 
which is quite tanky and does a decent amount of DPS as well. And your goal here is to make sure you fight Arthas outside of the range of the fountain, otherwise you just won't really have the DPS to commit him, because he has 2000 HP, so when you factor in, let's just say, 4% health regen from the fountain, he's very durable. Okay. Ice Archer is in progress, and we'll start to upgrade this Archer to an Assassinator so that we can keep the Poison effect going. We could Hex Arthas again, but it looks like we got it. Killing Arthas gives you a pretty sizable bounty, so it's very nice. And it pays for the Ice Shard as well. I'm going to prioritize that uh, one... Ocean Demon to make sure they die in time. I think we should still be able to kill this one pretty easily as well. Yep. More gold is required. What is it now? What's the plan? Level 24 is easier than 23, so if you got past 23, you should be just well, fine. I can hardly wait. Okay, the assassinator up, we'll have a really easy time against the next boss. And yeah, there's a good time to start leveling up a royal gunman so we can have a powerful anti air unit. Job's done. I'll check it out. We want level 2 or 3 for this. Upgrade complete. Level 2 is usually sufficient, but uh, you can do 3 if you want to be really cautious. Our forces are under attack. Get on with it. What is it now? And the revenant only lasts like 3 minutes, so you will have to buy additional revenants for extra bosses later on. Get on with it. Well? Yeah. This boss, when you combo the slow from the poison, slow from the frost attack, he is very easy. And yeah, you can get him to like half of his current speed as well. Shh, I'm trying to think here. Yeah, we're Sounds going to put the gut rippers on the flame archer. The reason why we're stacking all of the DPS items on the flame archer is she has splash damage, which is really useful. You could also put it on the bomb tower, but the bomb tower's attack rate is, I think, one fourth the attack rate of the flame archer, so you won't get nearly get as much effect it. from the added damage. Perfect. Looks like we should be just fine. Yes, here. What's the plan? I'm trying to think here. Sounds okay. Good. Next up is going to be a That's mage. Curious. So create a priestess and we'll just upgrade her to the max. Upgrade complete. Actually, you know what? We're not going to do that just yet. No need to sell the priest because we won't need that later. But what we're actually going to make right now is the moon. The goal with placing the moon archer is that you want it to be constructed as close to level 30 as possible. Because on level 30, there's a bonus wave. Every unit you kill in the bonus wave is incredibly valuable. I think you get like 150 gold per kill. So if you time it right, the Moon Archer will help you get like 5 easy kills on that. It's just a huge amount of gold. Yeah, so... I was thinking if I want to do this like halfway through level 29 for placing the next tower. Or a little bit earlier perhaps. But we'll also start researching the Archer attack range upgrade. That'll raise the Archer's attack range by about two or three hundred, which is pretty useful as well. That's curious. What is it now? Research complete. Yeah, to take out the gold coin is pretty useful if you hex it. Otherwise, well, the movement speed is very fast instead of very slow. Okay. In a moment here, we're going to place down the creature. 
Because the Moon Archer has a long attack range, it doesn't really matter too much where you put it. Sounds interesting. That's curious. Okay. Start. Honestly, it might be a little soon, but we'll do it right now anyway. The Moon Archer is now under construction. Sounds interesting. And if possible, we really want to prevent it from using its forces are under attack. Well? You require my assistance? Oh, okay. I messed it up. But the ultimate does last for a while, so some of it may still bleed over until round 30. Alright, just a little bit longer here. Lasts for 30 seconds, so our slow is actually hurting us. Okay, it's not bad. I think we'll get like 10 seconds of use. Just a few kills here. Every single one is incredibly valuable. Okay, not bad. I think we got a total of five kills, and we might even be able to sneak in a sixth. Alright, that was pretty good. If I put the Moon Archer down a few seconds I later, we would have probably gotten an extra kill or two, but I have no complaints. Get that. on with it. What is it now? I'm gonna go pick up this Orb of Corruption. The item itself is pretty useless, but I think it has a high resale value. Yeah, it sells for 125 gold. The reason why it's Whatever. useless that only gives you 7 damage and an armor reduction aura, but you're never really very low on damage out here, so there's not much of a point. Probably should focus the units that can attack The next unit we'll be getting is the Flame Archer's Evil Sister. She has slightly more attack speed than the level 1 Flame Archer, and she also gets more base damage as well. In terms of like cost, value, effectiveness, it might actually be better to go for a second flame archer, but uh, because we'll be stacking items, the upgraded hero is still the better choice. What is it now? Fine. Just really try to keep the gold well, coming away, mountain. Perfect. Once again, really high base health you means you can't even deal damage to it, really. The thing that I don't understand about the hexed creatures is I thought they were supposed to run away from the damage, but for some reason it keeps running back towards me. Makes it a lot harder to kill. You require my assistance? Okay, let's go and That's pick curious. up a couple of runed gauntlets. I can help. Because we placed these nice and early, we have access to the items nice and early as well. And we'll put all three of these on the Flame Archer's Eagle Our goal will be to get it up to six room gauntlets, so we should have it in a little bit. Okay, we killed the gold coin, which gives every single player 400 gold and 150 souls. Well? The Archmage's. Ultimate is also incredibly useless, so I don't recommend getting it. I can help. I'll take care of it. Oh, oh, That's cute. Okay, they will ditch the weaker of the items. What's the plan? Okay, let's move it over to the Ice Archer. Ice Archer also has splash damage. So putting raw damage increases on that on her is pretty good. What is it now? Yeah. And so right now, we have 250% beast attack speed, which means we're able to kill the incoming waves pretty easily. I think the next boss will spawn in a wave or two, so just be ready for that. Boss at the top left is what I'm referring to. The main boss is also spawning right now as well. But our slow combo is still going to be just as effective, so that's not going to be an issue. Oh! <laughs> accidentally just upgraded a bunch of dogs there. Huge waste of money, but uh, thankfully they're not too expensive. Yeah, it's just a waste because I don't think there's too many units that have normal armor left. 
but also the damage is just I can completely help. pointless at this point. When you compare it to the 1200 damage units that we're beginning to get. Okay, let me sell this dog and replace it with a militia. The militia we're going to upgrade into an AoE movement speed slow aura, which is what I had mentioned earlier. You can also make an additional Royal Soldier to get a 10% damage aura. We're not, probably not going to do that for a while. 10% isn't Upgrade that much complete. for the price. Get on with it. Okay, let's pick up another Ice what Shard and kill this boss. You require my assistance? Should be pretty easy. Just uh, use the Ice Revenant's Frost Nova and put the Frost Armor on a couple of the units and well. it should be just fine. And make sure you don't hide him under the fountain. Okay, let's get another level of the anti-air unit. Even though we probably have enough DPS without maxing this out, it's still useful because the maximum level anti-air unit is needed to unlock another tower. And yeah, it's actually the strongest tower, or perhaps the second strongest in the game, which is the city, uh, yeah, city guardian, and it requires the royal supreme volunteer team. All right, another boss down, which means we get a fair amount of gold for that. We could also transfer some of our attack speed items, but seeing as how we have a little bit of spare gold, I think we'll just buy some new. So now we kind of have the equivalent of a little more than two Rocketeer teams, or less than like one fifth the cost. Yeah, that's why these attack speed items are incredibly valuable. You require my assistance. Oh, nice, another orb of corruption to sell. I can hardly wait. For the final round here, which is level 40 going to move all of the attack speed items onto the Rocketeer team, just because the next wave is going to be incredibly powerful. And with our spare souls, I'm going to get some more archer attack range, which will further boost the attack range of our evil sister. Shh, I'm trying to think here. Shh, I'm trying to think here. It should be enough DPS to take out this wave. At a minimum, I don't think we'll leak more than one unit if we leak any at all. Okay, this is when that high attack range on the towers comes in handy. Okay, it looks like... Slightly off on my guess there. It seems like we'll leak about two or three units. Okay, one. It's acceptable. <laughs> we have 35 lives, so leaking one here or there is not a big deal. That's curious. Okay, now is the time to move the attack speed items back to the evil sister. What's the plan? And since the anti-air tower can't attack any of these, we will move the spare runic gauntlets to our doom. In a moment, I will also be upgrading the bomb tower to the Infernal Flamethrower, that is also a component of the City Guardian. That's curious. I'll take care of it. I can help. Okay. With that, you can now get the Infernal What's the plan? The Infernal Flamethrower is also Chaos Damage, which is pretty nice. Okay, Arthas has respawned, which means we just need to Hex him, make sure we don't die. We should now be strong enough to take out Arthas without purchasing an Ice Shard, so I'm going to save the 60 gold on that. With max level Hex, you can also keep them hexed for like 90% uptime. So with very basic micro, you shouldn't have any trouble killing Arthas. Measure. I'm going to hex him one more time to get him a little bit farther away. What is it now? And yeah, now we can just start taking. Unfortunately, 
the next batch of units just spawned, which is going to make this a little bit trickier. Let's go and purchase some more attack speed. And put these all onto Colonel Flamethrower. Yeah, we might just have to permastun Arthas at the moment until we get all these little secondary units down. That was a good time to complete the wizard that we were going to make you earlier. My assistance? I can hardly wait. Well? Perfect. Also going to start creating a multi-shot tower. You can put that one pretty much wherever you want. I just noticed I forgot to upgrade my damage aura tower into the demonic soldier, which has kept the unit's moving speed a little bit higher than I had initially planned. Not a huge deal though, seeing as that only costs What's us one life. Okay, we'll sell this one and replace it with the Ulti shot is the top right tower. We need to get that up to level 5, and that will be the final component of the city guard. The multi tower level 5 requires the wizard, which is why we had to get that done. Okay. With Arthas down, we should be able to pretty easily take out the other units in the piece. The silencers are able to go invulnerable, so if you're wondering why your towers have stopped attacking, that's the reason. City Guardian costs 4,200 gold, a fair amount of souls as well, so I think for good measure I'm going to train up an improved Wisp, which will give us a little bit of extra wood income and make sure we get above that 600 soul pressure. I think we would have reached it either way just from killing these guys, but it can't hurt. I need to get Antonitis down to the healing counter. I can hardly wait. Our objective here is just to keep stockpiling until we reach 4200. We should have that by the end of this wave. Now that I'm taking a look at it, the multi-tower is pretty solid, so it might make sense to transfer one of my unit's attack speed items to the multi-tower. Not sure which though. Infernal Flamethrower does splash damage. Eh, maybe there's no point. He splash, splash. Moon Archer transfer could make sense, but she's channeling right now. Okay, we now have enough resources to start training the City Guardian. He's a really long attack range, but pretty much wherever you put him, as long as it's somewhat centered in your maze, should be sufficient. And yeah, once these guys get a little bit farther, I'm going to sell a wolf and upgrade it. Okay, there we go. The City Guardian is now under construction, which is really important to have by the time you reach level 50. Let's also go and purchase a few more attack speed items so that we don't have to deal with any item relocation. Probably going to leak a few lives here, but not a big deal if we have spare. But yeah, the city guardian up, there should be no more leaks. Yeah, he has 8,000 chaos damage, which is really valuable. Got away with 2,000. Alright. Not quite as good of an outcome as I was hoping for, but 24 lives, still more than enough. 
This is the final help. flying wave of the game. There is a flying boss, but by the time we get to it, it shouldn't matter. That's curious. Okay, City Guardian now has six green gauntlets, which is what we were aiming for. Here are the two super items I was talking about earlier. The Soul of Faust and the Gut Removers. Both of which, even though we built these, I think, on like level 19, still aren't accessible. Which is why, yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd have to get What's that done for the Shh, item think. tower shop placed on level 1 if you want to have access. If this is the final non-boss wave. What's the plan? You require my assistance? We'll just keep taking out these units. At this point, though, we have enough souls that I don't think what these will matter at all. Yeah, getting all the extra souls on the bonus waves just wait. really overcaps you. Any other useful upgrades here? Job's done. I don't think any of these would apply to the City Guardian, but I don't think we need to get any. You could if you really wanted to get extra archer attack range. I don't recommend getting the archer damage upgrades, because they... Well, it's scaling on it's pretty bad. Whatever. The one tower I tested it on was a flame archer, and it gets like... I think an average of 50 damage increase from it, which for the price is pretty pathetic. Okay. Go and purchase some more gauntlets. Here's the first boss, as you can see, dying pretty quickly. And we haven't even given our second city guardian any extra attack speed yet. I'll check it out. Sounds good. Okay, and I have two maxed out City Guardians, which means we're going to start saving for a third. And instead of buying more Rune Gauntlets, for the future ones, we're just going to take the Gauntlets from other weaker units. What's the plan? Such as the Rune Archer is a good choice for that, and also the Flamethrower. We can just start transferring the Rune Archer's Gauntlets right now and save some time. And while we wait, we're going to add a few extra layers of names. I don't think we'll need any, but it never hurts. Looks like we can't quite seal that off. Alright, that's Sounds probably it. And we can now start our third scene guardian. Do you require my assistance? If the Antitonitis dies at this point, it really doesn't matter at all. Shh, I'm trying to think here. Sounds interesting. The flamethrowers got Okay, so that's three maxed out city guardians. The Pit Lord is almost dead after reaching the end of our second path. And in a moment here, we'll also upgrade the Demonic Soldier to the Demonic Warrior to get an additional 5% movement speed reduction. Also, I should have specified this earlier, but for the Demonic Soldier, you want to place that near the top so that it slows down the flying units, since those tend to be the most dangerous. Okay, this boss, because it doesn't have the invulnerability phase, will die really quickly. Oh, something insane about the City Guardian as well, is any unit that doesn't have magic immunity will get stunned by 8 for 8 seconds, which is just unbelievable. What's the plan? I'll check it out. Alright, 4th City Guardian That's is now under construction. And when this boss dies, we'll give you like 15,000 gold. We will be able to get a couple more. With that in mind, I'm going to try to pre-purchase as many Rune Gauntlets as I can, but it probably won't be many since I don't have too much money on hand. And yeah, the final boss on level 57 will actually die a bit faster than this one, because this guy also has invulnerability phases. So here's our Demonic Warrior, 20% movement speed slow, and 25 armor reduction, up to 5. Oh, pretty decent. Okay. 
Looks like this guy actually needs some attack speed items right now. We can transfer the Flame Marcher sister's attack speed. Start moving those over. Some of the bosses, or every single boss on the final set of waves, drops some pretty good items, so we'll try to pick those up when we can. In particular, you get a Soul of Loss for 200% attack speed, which means if you combo that with four rune gauntlets, that'll give you 400%. I believe 400 is always the magic number that'll cap out your attack speed in Warcraft 3. Alright. Now we could start creating some additional city guardians, but since the final boss spawns like one second after, it's not too much of a point. So here's our 90% like, movement speed reduction with four perfect city guardians. Now the final boss is not an issue. And there we go. We've now successfully beaten city defense. Or city team. For some reason that's different names. Yeah. So all in all, I think this is a pretty fun TD. I think the heroes could use a little more diversity. I haven't had any success with any hero besides Archmage Antonitis. The other hero choices just... Without the Hex, it's almost impossible, and a lot of them didn't have any stun at all, which made it really difficult. Aside from that, the higher difficulties on this game also are incredibly challenging, as going from easy to normal means the units will have 50% more life, Going from normal to hard will be an additional 50% on top of that. I'm just not really sure where you would make up all the extra DPS, because we didn't really have that much spare gold for most of the early game. But yeah, if you have any theories on what we would need to do to successfully beat the higher difficulties, let me know. I'd be curious to see what you think. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to play some games with me or see me play games with viewers. I do live streams every Saturday. Make sure you have your notifications set to all. I will see you guys next time.